In this video, we'll be reviewing one-dimensional kinematics for AP Physics 1. This is part of Unit 1 of AP Physics 1. Unit 1 also includes two-dimensional kinematics, which I'll be covering in another video. If you're interested in that, please hit that subscribe button and be notified when that video comes out. So first, we're going to distinguish between scalar and vector quantities. Scalar quantity is one that has magnitude only, while vector quantity has magnitude and direction. So an example of this would be distance and displacement. Distance is an example of a scalar quantity. It is just an amount. And uh, distance specifically is the total length of the path traveled. So if we're traveling from location A to location B, we see that on A, we're going to the left one, two, three spaces. And then we're moving to the right uh, one, two spaces. So three plus two is five. And if we're measuring in meters, this would be five meters. Displacement is a change in position. It doesn't matter the path. And it's also a vector as well. There is a direction. So we're only interested in the final initial position. So at location B, the final position is zero. The initial position is one where location A is. So zero minus one is negative one meter. The negative means that there is a direction. So in this particular case, if we make right positive, then the negative means that the displacement is towards the left. Now let's take a look at speed and velocity. Speed is a scalar. It is how fast an object is moving. It only has an amount. There's no direction. To calculate the speed of an object, it's the distance divided by the time. And if the speed is changing, what this tells you is the average speed. So the distance from A to B, uh, which we uh, calculated earlier, is 5 meters. And the time, which is given right here, is 5 seconds. And so the speed is simply 1 meter per second. Velocity is the rate at which an object changes position. And it is a vector because it does have a direction. The average velocity is the displacement divided by the time. The displacement is the final position minus the initial position, which we calculated earlier, which is 0 minus 1. And that the time is the final time minus the initial time. Oftentimes, the initial time is 0. And in this case, uh, we're going to assume it start from 0 time, 0 seconds, and, and takes 5 seconds. And the final time is 5 seconds. So 5 minus 0, we get negative 1 divided by 5. Negative 1 divided by 5 is 0.2, so it's negative 0.2 meters per second. So the negative here, what that means is the direction that the object is moving. So the velocity is moving at negative 0.2 meters per second, and it's moving towards the left because it's negative if we're making right positive. Next, let's take a look at the concept of acceleration. Sometimes the velocity of an object will change. And so the rate at which an object's velocity changes is called acceleration, which is a vector, which means that it has also a direction. So here we have a ball rolling down a ramp. It starts out with the initial velocity of 2 meters per second, and then ends up with the final velocity of 3 meters per second, and it takes 0.5 seconds to reach that final velocity. We know that an object is accelerating if any of these things happen. So any one of these things happening, we know that the object is accelerating based on our physics definition of acceleration. So if the object is speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. If the object is speeding up, we know that the velocity and acceleration are in the same direction. If the object is slowing down, we know that the velocity and acceleration are in opposite direction. If the object is changing direction, we also know that it's accelerating as well. We'll talk more about that situation in a future video. The average acceleration of an object is the change in velocity over the change in time. So it's Vf minus Vi. So here we have 3 minus 2 meters per second divided by the final time is 0.5 minus the initial time of 0. And we get 1 divided by 0.5. And that gives us 2 meters per second squared. 
And what that meters per second squared is, means is that for every second, the object's velocity is changing by two meters per second. Now let's take a look at a problem that requires one of the kinematic equations. An object accelerates from two meters per second to eight meters per second in six seconds. How far does the object travel? So to answer this question, we can use one of the kinematic equations. The equation sheet for the AP Physics 1 includes equations 1, 2, and 3. The fourth one is not on there, uh, but can be helpful to know. Now I have a chart here to help you figure out which equation to use. But first, before we get to that, we need to write down our known and unknown variables. And I've got a chart here on the bottom left. I encourage you to have that written out for solving these type of problems. So an object accelerates from 2 meters per second to 8 meters per second in 6 seconds. And one of the clues to knowing what each of these numbers are, uh, what these numbers represent as far as the variable is concerned, is to look at their units. So the units often are a hint to tell you what variable um, these numbers are. How far does the object travel? So we're looking for the displacement. And to solve it, we're going to look at which variable is not used. So that's going to be A. Now, if we're given A, then we can use any equation that has our unknown of displacement. But if we're missing one of the variables, as long as we have three, we can figure out the fourth variable. So uh, the one that doesn't have A would be this one right here. So I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to see that it's going to be this equation right here. Go here and go to the left. So I can see that this is the equation that I need. So I'm going to write that down. So delta x equals 1 over 2 vi plus vt times the time. Okay, so 1 half vi is 2, v, uh, sorry, vf, vf, sorry, vf, there's 8, and t is 6 seconds. So 2 plus 8 is 10, divided by 2 is 5, 5 times 6 is 30 meters. So this object travels 30 meters in these six seconds. Next I want to show you another way to solve this problem. So another way to solve this problem is to understand that the average velocity can also be calculated if it's moving at constant acceleration. You can also calculate it by adding up the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2. And this could be a really helpful way to uh, work through some of these problems sometimes. So the initial velocity is 2, final velocity is 8. So 2 plus 8 divided by 2, 10 divided by 2, that's 5 meters per second. So the average velocity of this object during this 6 seconds of travel is 5 meters per second. Furthermore, if we know the average velocity, then we also know that delta x equals average velocity times time. This is coming just simply for a definition of uh, average velocity, which is displacement over time. So if an average velocity is displacement over time, then the displacement equals the average velocity times time. And the average velocity is 5 meters per second times a time of 6 seconds. And we get the same answer, 30 meters. Now, on the AP Physics one, I will let you know, give you a heads up, that a lot of times it's not super mathematical. It is very conceptual. However, I do think that being able to work through these mathematically is a step to be able to answer some of the more conceptual questions on AP Physics one. Next, we're going to look at a specific case of acceleration. And so this specific case, or a special case of acceleration, is free fall. Free fall is when an object is falling only under the influence of gravity. So here we have a ball that's falling straight down. And you'll notice that at each second, the velocity is increasing by 10 meters per second. So we start off with 0, and then 10 meters per second. After 1 second, after 2 seconds, 20 meters per second, 3 seconds, it's 30 meters per second. And so we say that the acceleration of the falling object of free fall is 9.8 meters per second squared, or we can approximate it to 10 meters per second squared. Now on the AP exam, you can use 9.8 or 10 meters per second squared on free response questions, and either way will give you full credit on that. So what does 10 meters per second squared mean? What it means is that the speed is changing 10 meters per second every second. 
So that's why there's that second square. There's a second here and then there's a second there. It's just telling us that the speed is changing. And because we're talking about acceleration, it also has a direction. And that direction is going to be down. Now, if you made a positive, then your acceleration would be negative. It would be a negative 10 meters per second squared. If you make down positive, then your acceleration would be positive 10 meters per second squared. Now, what if you were to throw the ball straight up? If you were to ball throw the ball straight up, you would still have an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared downward. As you can see in the middle picture here, uh, we start off with a velocity of 20 meters per second upwards. Now, on the way up, you'll notice that the ball is slowing down. And so the acceleration is in the opposite direction, which makes sense because gravity pulls on things downward. The acceleration is going to always be downward for free fall motion. Uh, but the object here is going up. So the speed is slowing down. At the highest point, notice that there's no velocity. However, even at the highest point, there still is an acceleration. The acceleration is still down. And then, uh, as it's coming down one second later it's increasing its velocity and two seconds later it's 20 meters per second so it's on the way up it's losing 10 meters per second of speed and on the way down it's increasing 10 meters per second of speed and remember that the very highest point there still is an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared now you might ask why would it have an acceleration at the highest point well let's imagine the highest point this point right here at the highest point if it didn't have acceleration what would happen if it didn't have any velocity if there's no acceleration that would stay at zero meters per second but we know that it turns around and falls back down so we know even at the highest point there is an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared uh, on that ball next we'll take a look at using motion graphs to describe motion and so first, uh, we need to know some basics. We need to understand that um, slope can be positive, zero, or negative. So if it's going uphill, it's positive. If it's going downhill, it's negative. If it's flat, it has zero slope. Also, that on a motion graph for the position graph, that the steepness tells us how fast an object is moving. And on a position graph, the slope tells us the velocity. The difference here is that slope also can tell you whether or not the object's moving in the positive direction or in the negative direction. So the slope is also telling you the direction. Okay, we'll start with the graph on the left. And we noticed that it starts off flat, which means that the velocity is zero. And then it ends up being steep, which tells us that it's going fast. Now this is a positive slope. So I know that it's going to be in the positive region. That's just positive, zero, negative. So the positive velocity, and we're going to be dealing with constant acceleration. So I know it's going to be a straight line because the slope of the velocity tells me the acceleration. And so the velocity here is positive. Um, it's a positive slope. And so that tells me the acceleration is positive. Right? So remember that the slope of the position graph tells you the velocity and the slope of the velocity graph tells you the acceleration. Let's take a look at the one in the middle. We start off steep and then we end up flat. So we know it's going to be fast. It's a positive slope so it's going to be up here in the positive region and then flat means it's not moving so it's going to be there so and we know we're dealing with constant acceleration so it's going to be a straight line and so that is um, our velocity graph. Now we're going to go from velocity to acceleration. Notice this is a negative slope, which tells us that the acceleration is also going to be negative. Now what does a negative acceleration mean? Well, if you're moving in the positive direction and you have a negative acceleration, then the object is going to be slowing down. So you can go back previously in this video where we talked about object speeding up and slowing down and that if it's slowing down the velocity and the acceleration will be in opposite directions. Take a look at the graph on the right. We start off with steep slope and then it ends up being flat. 
Now this is a negative slope, so we know that the initial velocity will be in the negative region here. And then it's flat, which means not moving. And we know we're dealing with constant acceleration, so this will be a straight line. Now even though the velocity is negative, this slope is still positive. It's still positive because it's uphill. So that means the acceleration is positive. Once again, what does a positive acceleration mean? So a positive acceleration tells us that if the velocity is in the same direction, is also in positive direction, the object is speeding up. However, the velocity is in the negative direction, such as in this case, we have a negative velocity and the acceleration is positive. Since the velocity and acceleration are in opposite direction, the object will be slowing down, such as in this case. Also, the area under the velocity graph represents change in position or displacement and the area under the acceleration graph represents the change in velocity. Now let's take a look at motion maps which is another way to describe motion and we use dots and arrows to describe motion in motion maps. Uh, on the bottom here we have our first our position uh, arrow which is we're making right positive and then we have our velocity uh, and then we have our dots. Since in the first graph the object is speeding up the dots are getting farther and farther apart and you'll notice that the arrows are also getting longer. You'll also notice that there is a positive acceleration so each uh, arrow is getting longer by roughly about that amount. Now let's take a look at the one in the middle. So the graph in the middle here is slowing down in the positive direction. So the dots are going to be getting closer and closer. The arrows are getting shorter and shorter. Uh, the acceleration is going to be to the left. And this makes sense because the object is slowing down. So the velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. Now we'll look at the graph on the right. In this example, the object, looking at the graph, is uh, steep and flat, so it's uh, slowing down in the negative direction. It's, it's away from the origin, moving towards the origin, so it's moving in the negative direction and slowing down because it's flat over here. And so this object is moving, the velocity is towards the left, the dots are getting closer together, but the acceleration is towards the right, uh, which makes sense because the object is slowing down, and we know that the object slowing down, the velocity and acceleration have to be in opposite directions. Check out the next video for practice multiple choice questions on kinematics.